everyone, I'm Gitana from Supermicro's technology enablement team. Today we'll be setting up Stable Swarm UI on NVIDIA L40S Supermicro's Super Server. To get started, you'll need Supermicro's GPU Super Server, the SYS521GE TNRT, NVIDIA's L40S GPUs, Intel Xeon Gold 6448H CPUs. For our operating system, we're using Ubuntu 22.04. We'll be setting up stable Swarm UIs following the GitHub instructions and using Stable Diffusion's Excel, Stable Diffusion Medium, and Stable Video Diffusion models from Hugging Face. Stable Swarm UI is a platform created from Stability AI. Later, we'll talk with Patrick Fallon to dive deeper. Hello, everyone. I'm here with Patrick Fallon. My name is Kitana Toft. Hey, everyone. How are you doing? So I was wondering if you could explain a little bit about the system that we're reviewing for SBD. Yeah, actually this is a great system to do it on too. Let me introduce you to our 5U X13 system. This is a 521G TNRT. Uh, this is a huge powerhouse uh, and, and staple that we have here in Supermicro. Uh, this is designed to handle the most demanding tasks. Uh, it makes it a favorite for all of the high performance computing, uh, AI training, and even cloud gaming uh, customers that we have here too. Okay, can you tell me a bit about the process support for this? Yeah, so uh, a system like this is going to require the dual processor support. And being on our X13 line, that means that we're going to have support for our 5th gen and also our 6th gen uh, Intel Xeon scalable processors. So that's going to allow you to get up to 64 cores uh, per CPU and 128 threads per CPU. So that's some serious multitasking power there. Absolutely, it's true heavyweight. Let's talk about the memory next. Can you explain? Yeah, there's this system not only with uh, two CPUs, it's going to have 13 DIMMs of, slot, uh, DIMMs of memory. So that means it's going to have, we're just maxing it out. We're going to have about eight terabytes worth of DDR5 that it can support in there. Uh, so when we're operating on these workloads, it's going to be perfect for those who need that speed and that reliability. I see. What about the GPUs? Can you explain a little bit there? Absolutely. So this is a system that can accommodate up to 10 GPUs. Uh, so that means that you can have any GPU that you have in there up to about 300 watts. Mm -hmm. So that means an H100 or an A100, uh, for example. Uh, so that means if you uh, are a customer that's into deep learning or into 3D rendering, uh, this machine has your back. I see. Okay. And then what about the PCIe? What generation are we featuring? So this is Gen 5. And these uh, slots that we have on the PCIe tray are all going to be by 16 as well. So that means that a customer has an incredible amount of bandwidth uh, for their GPUs uh, or their other expansion cards, you know, whatever they want to run there. But all in all, it ensures that the data is going to flow smoothly and without any bottlenecks. I see. Okay. And then the SATA and NVMe phase? Drives? Can you explain those? Yeah, there's a front-facing JBOT as we see here, and what we're looking at in the first eight slots are going to be the hot swappable SATA and NVMe drives. So that's a really nice thing for anybody to use because you can change your drives on the fly, not having to shut down your system, and it gives you all the convenience to uh, do what's needed when you need to replace something. Great. And then what about the cooling that we have? I know this, this is an air-cooled system. It is, you're, you're right. Uh, so while we do have other liquid cooled systems of this nature, this is our air cooled system. And we have equipped it with 10 heavy duty fans to ma uh, maintain optimal temperatures under the heavy workloads. It has a dedicated 1U thermal zone at the very top for the GPUs. And that means that you can keep pushing those performance limits in your data center. Okay, since it has high performance and all these serious components such as the GPU and CPU, how do we maintain that power? So, right, that's a good question. Uh, with this system, what we've done is we've put four of our 2700 watt uh, titanium level power supplies in there. To, and we wanted to do that so that we could ensure that the uh, server stays up and running. And even if one of those little PSUs uh, fail, the downtime is not going to be an option. You'll still have uh, the rest to flip over and power your system. Okay, so this server isn't just about raw power. It's built for versatility. Can you explain some of the common applications that we'd be using for this server? Uh, off the top of my head, I would have to say that you're looking at the high performance computing or the HPC um, a market. Uh, I think we've mentioned the AI deep learning and training uh, market as well. Uh, one of the things we didn't mention was BDI, which is the 
virtual desktop infrastructure that customers uh, utilize a lot of GPUs in one system for multiple users. Um, one of the best solutions I think that this system uh, is for is for media and video streaming, uh, cloud gaming. Mm -hmm. um, this is also is a bona fide system and verified system in the animation field uh, and mo modeling. Uh, we have design, virtualization. I, I think that's uh, there. That's just a few. So yeah. Okay, great. So this isn't just a server. It's a robust platform engineered for the future of computing. So whether you're number crunching for AI models or rendering complex animations, the system is ready to tackle it all with style and efficiency. Joining me is Paru. We're both from Technology Enablement Super Micro team. Paru, can you tell me a bit about the market relevance of AI image generation? Of course, Kitana. Thank you for having me. The advent of generative AI-based imaging tools has opened a vast area of opportunities across various industries. These tools facilitate the conceptualization of complex ideas, enhance the productivity of creative professionals, improve visual engagement with end users, and make learning and experimentation and production of high quality images um, and content efficient and cost effective. The AI gener image generator market is expected uh, to expand from around 9 billion in 2024 to uh, 60 billion by 2030, which is a wow. conservative investment. Yeah, um, with a compound annual growth rate of 38.2%. So this is quite a big market to address. Could you elaborate on the specific industry use cases? Sure. The product design teams and other creative teams within organizations that work with visual data sets are poised to immensely benefit from these AI image generation tools. Take the automotive uh, industry, for example. We have designers and artists who traditionally have been spending several months on preparation and design reviews to move from the initial concept, ideation, and sketching to the development of full-scale models. With AI generation tool, these linear processes can be actually streamlined and accelerated. Uh, you can have text prompts and image prompts with mm -hmm. control levers that can infuse varied aesthetics in, uh, and style characteristics into designs and generate thousands of design inspirations. That is for the automotive industry or any other product design team uh, you can also use image generation tools uh, to aid a lot of um, advertising and marketing uh, teams as well in their creative process. I see. That would be extremely useful, I think. So how does image generation work at a high level? Could you explain? Sure. To, to distill the concepts, I would say that um, Generative AI models for image generation are trained on vast data sets comprising of billions of images with text captions and descriptions. Throughout the training process, these algorithms learn different aspects and visual characteristics of the images within the data sets. And these AI models also understand the text descriptions and the nuances in the words through embeddings that actually translate the semantic meaning and the context of that text into a high dimensional vector representation where each coordinate would represent a distinct attribute of that text. So as a result, these AI models become capable of generating new images that bear similarities in style and content to those found in the training data as um, steered by the text description or the prompt. I see. Okay. Very, very interesting. So then how does Supermicro, how do we play a part in this work? Um, we've been uh, around for a long time now and we definitely have been a part of this AI wave. Uh, we are helping design teams of customer organizations fine tune their creative workflows have full control over generation of their creative assets with Supermicro's high performance GPU accelerated server solutions. We have an impressive portfolio of solutions from the edge all the way to AI super clusters. 
So we are helping our customers all along the way in their generative AI pursuits. Thank you so much for answering all those questions today and thanks for joining me. Thank Hope you. to see you again soon. Thank you for having me. Thanks everyone for watching today. We showed you how to quickly set up Stable Swarm UI on Supermicro's super server with NVIDIA L40S. Now it's your turn to explore these powerful systems if you're interested in testing out the machines for yourself. I highly recommend that you check out Supermicro's Jumpstart program. This free platform allows you to remotely test and benchmark on Supermicro servers, including those powered by Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA. It is a fantastic way to see these systems handle your workloads without needing to set up things locally. Navigate to files. Just head over to Supermicro's Jumpstart to site, register for an account, medium, safe and schedule sensors, a test session. File. This is the file that you'll I access. Need to fully configured All systems. Other files will be included with SSH, on to our next BNC, of the and video, Web or I'm IPMI. Tight yet. And he gives you making it easy to validate and benchmark of this demo your application. Once you're here, configure your machine to your liking. Schedule the period you'd like to be using it for. You can either have it Ubuntu or Windows Server. Um, there's some BIOS settings you can configure. Note this is unique to your own system, and then complete the registration process. For additional resources, please refer back to this list here. Thanks for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, be sure to like and share it with friends. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to like and subscribe for more content from our team. And if you want to stay up to date with more tech tutorials, tech insights, and behind the scenes content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoy exploring these powerful servers with Supermicro's Jumpstart program.